Hey everybody. This video I'm going to show you how to service your digital multimeter. This is a fairly basic meter. It's a Syntec. There's the back of it. Anyways, um, there are two ways you can easily service your multimeter. I mean, there's two things that can be serviced. That'd be your battery and the fuse. Over time, as you use your multimeter, especially when you're measuring resistance, you can easily um, drain the battery in these things. And they take just, they, most of them just take a simple 9 volt battery. If not all of them take a simple 9 volt battery. I'm going to power it on. You can see the battery lights coming on. Doesn't stay on all the time, but there have been times where it would stay on for quite a while. So, as you can see, it's staying on right now. I'm going to set the resistance down to the 200 ohm range. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to power it off. And all you're going to need here is a um, Phillips head screwdriver. Now I also recommend taking the cables out just in case. I mean it's just something I always advise you to do. But here's what's funny. Is, um, I'm not sure if this thing still has the, um, the label on it anymore. But it used, used to be there was a um, sticker on here that said that there are no user serviceable parts inside this meter. So more or less when it dies, just replace it. However, there are actually many ways you can service these things. As I mentioned, well, there's two. The fuse and the battery. Anyways, I'm going to take a fuel test screwdriver and take the cover off the back. I'm going to go ahead and replace a battery in this one. And I have replaced a fuse in this one before too. Now basically when the battery is getting low you'll see the battery light and sometimes the meter may not just not work at all. And if the fuse is blown, the meter will work but when you hook the probes up to things to like measure resistance or voltages or whatever, you won't get anything unless you're reading um, let's set up the 10 amps on the 10 amp line because the voltage, the resistance, and the low current is fused. Okay, got the screws out. Take the back off. And here's what the inside of the meter looks like. This is fairly simple. There's a fuse I installed, it's a 500 milliamp fuse. And 500 milliamp fuses are typically what these digital multimeters take. Now, of course, um, just to show you, as an example here, the fuse size here is the same as, like, let's say a fuse that goes on a computer power supply. This one is rated for, I believe, 5 amps. Yep, 5 amps. So, just keep in mind, if it fits, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct fuse. You need to always check and make sure you replace the fuse with the correct ratings. I'm going to pull this one out just to show you. This is actually a ceramic fuse. This is a glass fuse. A glass fuse is what comes in this thing, but <clears throat> Radio Shack sells these ceramic fuses, and this is exactly the same thing. 500 milliamp, 250 volt fuse. That's what comes in it. So I'm going to stick that back in. I'm going to lift this battery out because that needs to be replaced. This is a matter of fact, this is the original 9 volt battery that come in this meter, so <laughs> it's been there for quite a while. Original 9 volt battery. I'm going to unpack these batteries. I only need one. And of course, Walmart sold them in two packs, so about $5 and something for the Ray of Vax. I'm going to take this one, and let's just see how much this one weighs compared to this one. I think the Ray of Vax weighs a little bit more than. 
this probably Chinese knockoff, which I'm sure this, this battery here is probably made in China too, so Rev actually usually made in China. But this is a much cheaper battery. <clears throat> You'll typically find these that, I mean, has the original batteries and electronics and stuff. Go ahead and install this battery. Sometimes they can be a little hassle to get installed. <clears throat> Once it snaps in there, you're good to go. Go ahead and set the battery back in. Just like that. Verify that it works. Hit the switch. And we're going to replace the cover. Took a bit of time to get it snapped in there, right? But here we go. We're going to put the screws back in. Alrighty. So anyways, those are the two ways you can service your digital multimeter. And what's funny is another sticker decided to fall off. Oh yeah, said um <laughs> that advisory sticker saying that this product contains chemicals including lead known to the state of California to cause cancer and other birth defects and reproductive harm. Anyways, that's how you serve as a digital multimeter. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.